Our daddy was arrested in the night, three days before we were arrested. We were arrested on April 13th, and daddy was arrested on April 10th. I remember he was arrested three days earlier. Mr. Machnik, he was also a policeman. He was much older than my father and of a higher rank. He had been arrested earlier, so he knocked on the wall and said, Mr. Yaraput, please, you have to escape. But my daddy said to my mom, no, I am not going to run away. I never did a bad thing in my life. I have never harmed anyone and I don't think I will be harmed either. But it happened differently. He was arrested and taken away. We didn't know where, we didn't know anything. Only three days later, at three o'clock at night, they came. They woke us up pounding on the door with the butt of their guns, as they usually did. One of them guarded my mother. Two or maybe even three soldiers. They had a list of names which had been made earlier because my younger sister was nearby at my grandmother's house, which was three miles away from Lubich Kulevska. So they looked at the list and asked my mother where the one other child was. And my mother had to go with one of the soldiers immediately, in the middle of the night, to my grandmother's house to pick up my younger sister. She brought her back, and one of the soldiers said to my mother, Listen, you have three little kids and we're taking you where there is only cold and snow. So pack warm winter clothing and bed clothes. But they only gave her one hour to pack her belongings. And our mother, what she could pack in this hurry, with nervous children crying in fear and soldiers screaming, so she packed eider-down comforters and she dressed us very warmly. I remember, and my mother confirmed it later, that she took a painting of the Black Madonna from Cheostahova, which was a family treasure of ours for years, down from the wall and we left. They took us, our transport was in Ravaruska. It was a rallying point. It was 10 miles away from Lubich Kulevska. There they put us into cattle cars. It was so crowded, so crowded. And we waited there for two or three days in the cattle cars as they brought more and more people. I remember my grandmother was coming. We were not allowed to get out from the cars, and no one was allowed to get in. So my grandmother stood on the platform, crying. She gave us a few loaves of bread. She knew that we were going into the unknown, and that my mother was alone with three little kids. This image is one of my earliest memories of childhood. Later, when the transport began, I know only that we traveled for five weeks. We were bolted into these cattle cars. Only when the train stopped at the bigger train stations were we given bread and water. In the car, it was very, very crowded. Children were crying all the time. Older people were praying. Those were the conditions in which we were transported. I was just a child, but I recall that someone read the poems of Adam Mickiewicz aloud, and I still remember some parts of the poems. At that time, I didn't know that it was Mickiewicz's poetry. I realized that it was his when I returned to Poland and went to high school. I recognized it. So for five weeks, we were transported under those conditions. We were lucky that we were deported on April 13th and not in the wintertime, like the people in the first deportations, as I learned later. After five weeks, we arrived in Aktubinsk, in Kazakhstan. Our transport was held there for a few days while they unloaded the cattle cars and placed people 
by families into different cooperative farms, different kolhoses. Our destination was a kolhos named after General Kirov. in the Pietrakovskaya region. I don't remember exactly. Anyway, our coal host was 25 miles from the city of Aktubinsk. We were given a mud hut in the coal host. It was dug out below ground level And we lived there for our first two years, only our family. There were no plank beds, not a single piece of furniture. We slept on the floor. Our mother spread one of the eiderdown comforters out on the floor and covered us with the other one. The winter was terrible in those times because there was no fuel. It was so cold, there was frost two or three centimeters deep on the walls inside of our hut, nonstop, all winter long, and winter there was seven or eight months long. It was this kind of harsh climate. In the winter, we had to lie down all the time covered by the eiderdown. After the first spring or winter, we no longer had any shoes or clothing because we had grown out of our clothes. Without clothing, we were forced to lay down under the covers all the time. It was tragic. We couldn't move at all. Our mom had to work all the time, in the fall, in the winter, and in the spring, all year round. She worked 12 to 16-hour days. We were alone all the time. I remember the winters were the worst because the hunger was terrible, terrible. There was no bakery in our kolhos. They brought bread in from Aktubinsk. The daily portion for a working adult was 17 ounces. For children, 10 ounces. There were weeks when we didn't get a single gram of bread because there was no bread in Aktubinsk or the roads were covered with deep snow, so nobody could get through. And during those times, we were dying from hunger. I will never forget any of those moments. It was a severely cold winter. People, maybe there would be no bread for six weeks and people were getting sick and going mad from hunger. They formed a line and stood in line all night next to the store waiting in case they brought some bread. People listened to see if they could hear camels roaming. People laid down on the ground. They used camels to bring the bread, and the camels made very distinct noises, and during the cold, one could hear them from 12 miles away. So people were waiting for hours in the hopes that they were going to get bread. Very often the people who brought the bread added water to it in order to make it the correct weight. They stole from us in this way. Technically, our portions of bread were the correct weight, but they had been made to weigh heavier than they were by the added water. It wasn't the portion we were supposed to get. I remember those sorts of things.